Hello and welcome to another OSU Cascades Campus Groups tutorial. Today I will be showing group officers how to create and uh, promote forms and surveys within campus groups. So from the campus groups homepage at oregonstate.campusgroups.com, uh, we're going to go up to the groups icon on the top taskbar or on the side where it says my groups and find your group and click the gear icon. So I'm going to do the Oregon State University Cascades. Click the gear icon. That's going to take us to the group dashboard. As discussed before, uh, coming up to the right hand corner and clicking the create button, we're going to go ahead and click create form. And what this is going to do for us is create a blank form. Um, the first thing we're going to do is change the title. So up here on the upper left, you can see you just created a, um, a default title for us. Uh, if you double click and you start typing, um, we can say sample form. And if we click away, it's going to save the survey name is now sample form. Right below that, you're going to see uh, this wrench and screwdriver. That's going to be a survey settings. The previous survey is going to be these binoculars, add a new page. Uh, you can save it as a PDF, expand, or collapse pages. So we're going to go ahead and take a look real quick at the survey settings. So the first section here is basic information. So the author, that's going to be the person that receives the notification every time it's uh, filled out, and also the person who owns the actual form. So in that case, it could be myself. The form name, which we just changed. The type, is it a form, survey, poll, election, quiz, or job application? In most cases, it's probably going to be a form or survey. We can add a short description of the actual form itself. This would be visible uh, to folks. We can also add a custom confirmation message once they submit the survey. Uh, you can add a workflow. So if there are existing workflows within your group, you can add this to the form. And that way, when someone submits it, it'll follow the workflow process. Is it mandatory? This is only available for admin. And then if it's a quiz, is there a pass fail combination? And what does that look like? Remember, if you change any of these settings, click save before moving on to the next page or exiting the settings. Next is instructions. Here we can add a closing sentence. So that's right before someone submits. A message displayed on the confirmation page. Um, open, close, and gap or cap. So we can uh, designate is the, is the form currently available to be filled out? Uh, is there an open date and time or a closed date and time? Is there a number of total um, forms that may be submitted or submissions that may be accepted through this form? We can enter those all here. Access rights, is it accessible to a specific group of people? Do they need to log in? Does it remain anonymous? Can people edit their answers after? Um, is it only a one answer situation? Stuff like that. Notifications, um, who should get a notification once it's completed or someone submits something? If it's approved or denied, uh, new submissions, we need to tag the user uh, and then add additional messages uh, when it's accepted, approved or put on hold. And the last section is approval. Um, so do you wanna hide the approval box from the submissions page? Uh, essentially, this is just for um, group officers to designate is the submission approved, denied, or on hold, or otherwise. The next section here I want to show you real quick, and we can review it at the end, is the preview survey. So if I click on this, this is what it would look like for anyone else that isn't an officer completing the survey. So I'll go ahead and go back to editing it. And here you can see this is our first blank page. It's an untitled page. So just like the form name. Um, we can go ahead and come over here and just click on that and we can add page one is going to be first page sample. So that's going to be the name of this page. And we can add an introduction to the page and we can add additional HTML formatting such as hyperlinks, bullet points, photos and whatnot. For our purposes, I'll just leave it blank. Next, we're going to add a question. So there's several question types. There's a free text, a single line text. Uh, so that could be a name. Um, or something that's a single word or a few word answer, multiple choice, single selection. So this would be, you have a list of things with radio buttons, so you can only select one. Multi-choice, that's going to be check marks, a drop down, which is going to be a single choice. Free text, multi-lines could be like a paragraph, somebody wants to submit something with 50 words in it. Um, a file upload, they can submit actual files, which will be stored in campus groups. A date selector, so this will allow them to select a date. A club list drop down. So this you can actually designate 
Um, for example, if you want to select what club are you a member of, you can say, I want to show student clubs and student sports clubs as options and folks can select uh, what they are a part of. You can have rankings, so you can have several options and have people rank them in order from one to 10 or whatnot. An election, this is uh, great for ACC elections, but probably nowhere else. Um, you can actually add candidates by their profile, add description or photos, and I'll actually separate them uh, very much like a ballot or a, um, a voter's pamphlet. A signature, this essentially uh, allows someone to type their name and it creates a cursive uh, signature field that is associated with the form. You can create a quiz. This will assign points to questions, multiple choice. You can select which one's correct or not. A user selector. So this will allow folks to select a, a person's profile, whether it be their own or someone else's from campus groups. And that way, all that individual's profile information will be associated with the question or form. And then finally, a rubric. So this allows you to have several questions with different rubric um, uh, levels from one to 10 or good to bad. Um, and you can allow you to uh, assess those uh, various session, those various um, um, you know, ideas along different questions. So then if we go ahead and just type in here, first name for a single line, we can change the text type to text. It could also be numeric or an email or a URL. In this case, we'll let's say text. Is it mandatory or not? Does somebody have to complete it? Uh, in this case, we'll say yes. Is it an officer only question? So if someone's an officer completing this form, can they only access this? Otherwise, are there other access levels we want to restrict this to? So is it only specific users, people and groups? In this case, we'll just leave it for everyone. Is it an active question? That's gonna be yes. We can talk about that in a second. Are there additional instructions for this question? So I can add those here or add HTML. So again, links or whatnot. Is there a separating question above or separating um, sentence above the question, uh, potentially adding more details or designating that this is optional or whatnot. And then we can go into advanced here and you can see those um, two options are available again. So you can add several of these click and save changes. Um, for example, if we add another one here, that's a drop down for a club. So what's really cool about campus groups is you can uh, be very intuitive with your uh, user experience. So for example, if you have a question that you want to show a different page depending on their answer to the previous question. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new page here. We'll just call this second page example. And say that I wanna hide this page for the time being. So not everyone can see that page. So if I go in here to the second question where they select from a dropdown and I select logistics, what this does is it brings up, or logics, I'm sorry, logics. It brings up some options for us. So if I create a logic, it'll allow me to do a question logic, page logic, submission tag, submitter tag, or workflow. So in this case, we're gonna do a question. If question, which is this blank one here, the dropdown is, um, you know, whether it be this. So there's several conditions, is, is not, contains, and so on. So if it contains, say, um, Oregon State University Cascades, then, so this is an if question contains Oregon State University Cascades, then do. So we can show or hide. And what we're going to do is show. And then this would be a question. So if I change this to page, we can do the same thing to where if that question the drop down for clubs and groups says contains Oregon State University Cascades. We're going to show second page example, which I hid earlier. And this is going to be active logic. So if I save this, what it will do is if we go ahead and preview this again, if you can see the first page, we have the name. So this is and then we select a group. If it contains with your cascades, if I click next, in this case, it will take me to the second page. So if I were to select anything else, for example, write the wrong, and I click next, it will submit the form. So this allows you to create a, a series of if then statements that you can control how folks interact with a form. For example, if they designate that they are in need of a particular resource, then you can allow them to only complete the remaining sections of the form that relate to the things that they are interested in or that they need. 
so I'll delete some of these other things. You can duplicate and drag and drop these sections. You can edit them or delete them as well. Um, and you can add workflow options in here as well. So if you have existing workflows in your group, um, you could say if their first name equals or contains this, just like in the logic and say, add you know, so-and-so to a workflow. Um, so those are some pretty cool functions here. It's essentially a middle ground between Qualtrics, which is extremely uh, complicated and has a lot of incredible capabilities within it, programming options, and Google Forms, which is pretty basic, a drag and drop. You only have so many features available to you. So Canvas Script is really great. It's a mixture between the two and it's super user friendly. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to surveys and forms. So this is in your group from the dashboard on the left-hand side, surveys and forms, all surveys and forms. This is where you can see all your submissions and manage all of your various forms. So here you can see our sample form, which was created today, it has one question, no submissions, sign is required. But there's no other restrictions here. So I can edit this, I can preview it, but if I click on these three little dots, I can manage the form, I can change access rights, I can copy the link. So what's really cool about campus groups, any link creation for events or surveys, um, they all make a, a URL shortener and a QR code for every one. So here I can copy this and put it in a newsletter or on a flyer, the QR code. But also within under, under these three dots, I can view uh, the logics, I can send the survey via email, I can edit the settings or I can archive or delete it. What we're going to do real quick is show you how to manage your survey. So if you click on manage, you can see here there would be a series of submissions. I can generate a report that describes those. I can email anyone that's completed a submission. I can view the statistics of the submissions. I could add answer tags. I could archive and, and so on. And then here again, I can copy the link, uh, edit the settings or edit the actual form itself or preview the form. So all this again is available under your surveys and forms within your group. From the dashboard, you can also click surveys and forms or the create button to create them. I hope you enjoyed and understand now how to create forms and surveys within campus groups. These could be used for various things such as uh, climate surveys, registration forms, membership forms, applications, and so on. Um, if you have any additional questions, make sure to visit our campus groups website or contact us. Have a wonderful day.